Thank you for coming. Um, this Bruce Bailey program was originally linked to uh, the publishing by Gabini Ortega of a book, a book entitled uh, Somewhere Between Here and Heaven, the films of Bruce Bailey. Uh, the book was supposed to be published this summer, but it has been postponed. So we don't, yet, I think by the end of, of the month or something, by the end, of, the end of October, it will be released. But we don't have the book yet. Still, Gabini Ortega has some uh, non-seen documents to show us, interviews with Bruce Bailey. So I think it will be very interesting to listen. And uh, I suppose uh, you will be able to find the book on and buy it if, you, if you're interested on the internet or any other ones. Gabini? Yes. Not to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, since we don't have the book and they were like insistent to have this presentation, I felt that it could be interesting to show some some of the the documents that I found during the, the research and to talk more about the content and, and yeah, to share a little bit of, of this journey. Um, so how should I start? Um, first of all, I have to say that, uh, well, this is going to be a bilingual book. It's going to be published in Mexico by this film festival called Distrital and um, a production company that is called Interior Trece. And when I was working in a festival called Ambulante, um, I was working on this program to uh, to bring together some of the Bailey and Chickstrand films that were made in Mexico, and I did this program uh, showing Valentin de las Sierras and Take Your Factory. And I was very surprised that a lot of colleagues of mine from Mexico didn't know about his work, and obviously not the Mexican audiences. So I, I got in touch with Bruce uh, just to invite him to come to Mexico because I knew that he was. He, he's in love with Mexico, and he finally didn't come, but we started um, emailing each other very frequently. And uh, so I started thinking that, it, that uh, it would be like a good idea and a very nice project to bring to the Mexican audiences that his work, and also to work on a, a publication. Um, knowing that it was a big responsibility since there are now so many things um, like published but, um, on him. And it wasn't my <coughs> idea to, to do like the, the, the final and the most definitive uh, book on Bailey. Um, it was mu much more an homage and, and uh, I don't know, um, a way to know him better. Uh, but I'm I like to show this uh, this picture because this this was taken in my first visit to to have this interview and to meet him in person after months of of emails. We sh we we've been emailing each other for almost two years now, and I get an email from him every two three days. He loves writing emails to everyone. And um, so I was very excited to visit him in Camano Island, where he lives. And um, oh, it's a shame that uh, the colors are not so great, but that's baby. <laughs> 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 and um, this was our first conversation. And I, uh, the, the book uh, will have um, made probably all of you know, a critical cinema books uh, that are, were uh, written by Scott McDonald. And we will include his conversation with Bailey that was, I think that it was by, made back in the 80s, right? That conversation between Scott and Bruce. We will include that conversation, that uh, interview, because I thought that it was like really well done with a lot of details. It was like chron chronological, but I wanted to have another conversation with him after, you know, um, I mean, 20 years later, right? And we've been, <laughs> and these are his chickens. <laughs> this, this is an example of the images that we share in our correspondence. That's Apichabong and, and Bruce Lee. Uh, 
this, this self-portrait, <laughs> this beautiful picture, his hand. And this is what I found uh, when I, I visited him. Um, I thought it was last August. And when I was emailing him saying, hey, make, we'll see each other next week, I got an email from him saying, you know what, I just found in the garage this huge box full of letters written in the 60s. And um, now the anthology film archives uh, has bought it and they have it there. But they were like amazing letters from anyone you can think of. I mean, obviously all his friends, Chick Strand, Stan Brackett, but Marlon Brando's famous letter, letter uh, to him it was there. Also, I don't know, Susan Sontag, all kinds of interesting people. And what I found out in that um, trip was that Bruce Bailey is many many people that I, I didn't know of. He's, he's the filmmaker, the writer, the, uh, the painter too, but he likes to call himself the fictionalist. And I'm gonna, this is a poem that he wrote and that uh, I think that uh, describes a lot what uh, he, how he sees himself, Le Postel. And I'm gonna show you a clip of that moment where he explains to me what a fictionalist is. Sorry, it's kind of difficult to have my baby crying. <laughs> I don't know where take his father is. Take a break. Take but uh, that's why I'm like. say in retrospect, which is kind of interesting, I've discovered that, uh, oh, here's the word, l'imposture, oh, yeah. the imposter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've discovered that uh, uh, what's the other word again? Uh, the Im <laughs> imposter. What's the other one? Impersonator. Impersonator. Impersonation can become habitual. And uh, it becomes destructive. And so one has to once again step out of the picture to uh, re-ascertain 
uh, your footing, your mm -hmm. where you who you really are again in now. So you're now you're just here at home in your yard, and you're not Mr. or Mrs. Fancy or anybody special. There isn't any such thing anymore. There's not the imposter. There's not the artist. There's none of it. It's just. Uh, So it, it it comes down to nothing. So then, what do you? <laughs> so the question comes from from without. What are you waiting for? It comes from heaven or something. <laughs> and so then you have to answer that. And so that's the question that we might you know ask. We might be. Uh, pondering uh, here in the Hardines. <laughs> Is that Spanish or French or French? <laughs> <laughs> That's one gift I, I mentioned to you, I think. In losing my memory from surgery, sinus surgery, and all of the chemicals they give you can cause you loss of uh, Memory. Permanent. The clip is really long, yeah. but it's called I, post. I wanted to have him in spirit since we don't have the book, and I, I really wanted to show you a couple of clips where he explains more about the way he understands uh, what he does, and and this this definition when he explained to me that he was a pure fictionalist changed everything in the book. That's why I chose this clip because I I found out that uh, I was as I was saying that he is a lot of persons, right? And he joined the navy. This person that we have in mind, this mm, filmmaker that was an explorer that used to live in a commune in San Francisco, and la la la, suddenly uh, joined the navy and became like this fictionalist where he doesn't distinguish between pure fiction and, and fact. And, and that was like a, a really important moment for us to, sh to shape the book because I, I really wanted to have that in the book as well. And so um, we will include um, different, um, different things that are not only about his films. Obviously, there will be a lot of documents that I will show you now. but. Um, but we will include um, drawings, these beautiful <laughs> pictures of his childhood. Some, this is not gonna be in the book, but I wanted to show you. Uh, we found, a make, I mean, he, part of his archive is in Stanford, and, and the recent discovery uh, that he found in the garage is uh, the anthology film archives, and we found this, this kind of things that it's a shame that we don't see this, but this is the famous Volkswagen where he used to live while making his films around the country, I mean, crossing the country. This is Bruce working in Morning Star Commune. I love this <laughs> one. We will include this because I think that he will be very happy to see that in, in a book, Chaplin and Bailey in the in film category. This is a beautiful piece. Um, that Jonas Nikas wrote um, that has been in many other books, but we, we will have it as it is um, in the book. And we found this view, I mean, there are tons of notebooks with film ideas and for, I mean, structures of films that are not made, um, all kinds of drawings, a lot of, I don't know, um, notes, um, film structure, um, the use of music, I mean, it's, it's really overwhelming. I mean, there are like, like, I don't know how many boxes. I think there are like 28 boxes and each box has like 10 or 15 notebooks, so. Um, but we will include some of this too. And this is a beautiful picture with his dog. And this is the, this is going to be also in the book, this is the structure of mass for the Karasu. And it's beautiful how 
I mean, you cannot read it here, but um, you can you can read Kyrie and you know all the parts of of the mass and how he was editing it. See, this this says filmed to be shot in Union Square, San Francisco. During lunch hour, when the sun is out and people sit on benches, and, you know, so there are so many things that are written in those notebooks. This is gonna be the cover of the book, <laughs> and, and we will include these uh, letters. Uh, one of, of the ideas that uh, that I had in the beginning for, was the correspondence because that's how everything started. I never had this idea of making of of you know, curating a series and doing this whole trip of, of, of uh, this publication on Bruce Bailey. But uh, as I said in the beginning, I felt that it was like a good moment to to also honestly help him out to show the work again, uh, especially out, outside of the U.S. And, um, and since everything started through letters, this is the main concept of the book as well. So we will include a lot of letters uh, as this one that is beautiful, written by Chick Strand when she was living in Mexico in San Miguel de Allende. Uh, this one is from 83. Some letters from Stan Brackett as well. And they, they share a lot of ideas of, of films that they send to each other, but also about their the daily life. And, and uh, there is this chapter in the book that I really like that is, um, that I ask a lot of film people to write an open letter to Bruce Bailey. So this one is a postcard that Ben Rivers sent to Bruce uh, some months ago. And uh, it, this is a beautiful postcard from Mexico that Ben stole at somebody's house in Boston, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and he wrote him this, this uh, postcard. But uh, in this chapter, and there are people like J.P. Snarecki and Andrea Picard, where she, for example, explains how important it was uh, to watch Castor Street when she was uh, starting to program, and how that film changed uh, a lot of, um, yeah, I mean, somehow it, it shifted her career uh, to program this kind of, of cinema. Uh, there is another beautiful, uh, a piece by Janice Crystal Lipsin, uh, where she explains when she was a young filmmaker, when, when the impression that she had when she met uh, Bruce, and how influential she was, uh, he was uh, for the experimental film community. But also we'll have uh, Dina Johnston, that was the former, uh, the former director of Canyon Cinema, Richard Peña wrote this essay uh, on Castro Street. Um, Peter Hatton wrote this beautiful letter that I read uh, a photo of uh, the other day. And um, so anyway, it was like, again, this idea of giving the opportunity to these people to express. Uh, this is part of the, the last projects that he's been working on the last years, some uh, uh, videos. <laughs> this is me and Bruce in the last trip. Uh, I was with J.P. Sniadeki and we were for a week there and we found a lot of stuff that we sent to New York. And <laughs> this is Bruce. And this is Bruce in his studio that is full of pictures and images. It's pretty amazing. And yeah, and I don't want to speak a lot <laughs> since you guys have a lot of things to see in this festival, but I wanted to share a little bit of the process and why we, uh, we shaped the book uh, as it is. Um, there's going to be also a critical essay written by Steve Anker that is has been recently finished. And, and also there's this uh, part of the book with a lot of things that you've, you've seen, documents, drawings, stills, and 
poems. And there is this other chapter that is called Bruce Bailey by Bruce Bailey, where I, I edited a lot of different, uh, yeah, books <coughs> from him, from his notebooks and interviews that I've been reading. And um, yeah. That's it. I don't know. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. <laughs>